Flo, how are you? Let me go back over the stream yard. How is everyone and anyone who may be watching? So <clears throat> I'll wait for a few more people to join up. Uh, um, I am doing well, thank you. I went and did some some shopping today, and uh, we went. Me and my husband we went and got breakfast. Hey, VJ, happy Saturday. We went and got some breakfast at IHOP, and then we went over to Michael's, and we went and got my granddaughter and family some donuts from Krispy Kreme. Then we went downtown to my local yarn store, Baba's. And because it's my first trip of the new year, so went to say hey to Roz and the gang and get some yarn and well, one skein of yarn, some size 15, which are 10 millimeter knitting needles that I need for this Hohi Locatelli grandpa sweater. I have circular, circular size 15s, but for this part I'm doing it'll be easier on straights, so I didn't have any straights. I have every Thing but size 15 on straights and uh yeah so so i picked some of those up and i'll show y'all what i got from there as well um once we get some more people up in this joint so how is everybody else doing this saturday hope you guys are having a good day I didn't do a video inside a local yarn shop because I didn't I didn't take my phone in. I, I wasn't even thinking about it. But um but I bought this I bought the stuff that I brought <laughs> to show y'all what I got in there. So and uh yep. And then we went to the 7 Eleven, one of the ones my husband used to work at. So we stopped in there to get a root beer from the fountain machine but they didn't have root beer you frog the loon it i never took to loons as far as the you know i could do it i learned how to do it but it just for me just knitting was faster than using that loon so so i got my root beer so i'm happy and um and yep that's pretty much it and then came home and i had a package waiting for me on the porch that from what i won the other day from sunita so thank you sunita i got my package i'll be opening that up here as well so how many people we got we ain't even showing how many people are watching on this it usually shows it on the broadcast there it is five people okay which one of them is nightbot so four people Plus myself. So there's two people watching. <laughs> uh, but um, but we're going to be going bowling tonight. So I'll probably take some video of that. Show y'all my friend, Ashley, who stops in from time to time. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off with um, my package from Sunita. Thank you for all you do. There was a giveaway on VJ's. It was on your channel, wasn't it, VJ? Was it yesterday? Was it Friday? The day well, that was yesterday. Was it Wednesday? I think it was Wednesday. Yeah, yep. I was telling um your friend about the pattern, I think. And I was trying to stay awake because I was, for some reason, I was so tired and sleepy that day. And all of a sudden, I heard you saying, congratulations, Juanita. And I opened my eyes and I looked and it was like, congratulations, congratulations. And I'm like, what did I, have I done to win something? <laughs> and then that's when I found out I won. So 
I'm going to show. Oh, this is pretty. I don't think I've ever had any of this before. Nope. I've definitely not had any of this before. It's the King Cole Riot. I've heard people talk about it. My friend Paula over in the UK, as well as the, um, one of the British podcasts. She's uh, a store owner. I'm trying to think of her podcast. But she uh, carries she carries King Cole. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. And the colors are showing up great. So Nita sent me two skeins of the King Cole, right? No, three. Three skeins. Look at this. Oh, wow. Look at that. There's three skeins of it. And you can hear Luna in the background. She's playing with Grandpa. It's 145 yards of skein. So I have to find a nice project where I can use all of that. This, these colors are great. I don't know if I could have let that go, Sunita. You must have a lot more of it. <laughs> but it is gorgeous. That is some... Hey, Alby! That is some freaking gorgeous colors right there. Look at that. So there was three skeins of this. I was not expecting this. I thought she was just going to send me the Caron uh, Ogo in the, um, that colorway that she sent me before that I won. And... Um, she said she had one skein, so this is all I was expecting. And the uh, Ogo is 481 yards. And this colorway is frost. I think it's frost, something frost. If I can get it. It might be covered up. Patent pending. Yeah, I don't... Oh, here's on this side. It's on this label. The colorway is blue stone frost. So bootstone frost. And I'm gonna make another cardigan with this. Now I have enough to make a cardigan um for myself. Because I got two from Joanne's when it was on sale. And um Sunita sent me two of these before. So now I have enough for a cardigan. The colors for the King Cole, the colorway is called Firefly. And this is blue stone frost. And it's got like a little halo, like almost got like a little mohair looking halo on it. So, wait a minute. She sent me two of them. So there's two of them in there. Look. So she sent me five skeins of yarn. Thank you so much, Sunita. Thank you, thank you. I'm so appreciative. Let me put it back in the bag. I definitely have enough because I am a 44 double D now and uh, so most of my clothes have to be made to fit the girls not to fit me <laughs> so a lot of people don't understand that is that like well you don't look like you will wear that size top where my size pants and my size tops are completely different simply because of the boobage. It's um it's more of a a, a burgundy, like a burgundy on the brown side of red than a purple. It's it's not a purple per se, it's more of a, a, a deep burgundy like a burgundy brown to black like this part right here it looks purpley on the screen but it's not it's a real deep burgundy on the on the warm side of red on the brown side of red and um and then that's like a this is like a peachy brown right here that's like a peachy brown it's kind of showing up right and then this red is more of a this part here is more of a christmasy red it's showing up like an orange this is the actual orange section right here like the the warmer oranges going into the browns but it looks almost a pumpkiny orange up there but it's not it's a real warm uh dark orange that right there so but it's beautiful beautiful yarn Hello, lurkers. Hello, yarn work by Lydia. 
So there's three of those. Where is my calculator? She's always, because she likes to push the buttons on the calculator. So I'm always looking for my calculator. With my luck. Hopefully she didn't take it downstairs. But Luna's always borrowing it. Because she likes to push the buttons. I don't see it on my desktop. I need medicine. I need medicine. Girl, why you harassing me? I need medicine. Did you borrow grandma button button thing with the numbers? No. No? I need medicine. I, I'm going to give you some medicine. Just give me a second, ma'am. Give me a second. Let me find your black hair. And after this, all you got left is your children's Robitussin. And my water. And some water. The cup is empty. Here. You got the pill. Here. You got it. That is not a pill. That is medicine. It's your chewable. A chewable pill. You little ugly child. Okay. Hey, Kelly, how are you? All right, so that was my mail from Sunita. And so now I'm going to show y'all what I got in the yarn store. All right, so let me put this over here. First thing was I saw this yarn. I don't know if you can see the sparkles. There we go. But it's a little bit of a darker green than what's showing up on the screen. It's more of an olive green with some lighter highlighted areas. So there was a cow. Uh, it's, a, it's a circular cow. And it's called Earthshine. And this is what it looks like. It has like some pearl rose to accent the lighter shades. So you use two yarns. And the lighter yarn is you use use that for the pearl rose. And I'm going to pick out a hand spun to use for the lighter rose. So I got that pattern. It's available on Reverie. And it's called Earthshine. Earthshine. And since I said I needed my size 15 straights to work on my grandpa sweater which is a, a number five bulky weight sweater from hohi locatelli i started it on my size 15 circulars but as you can see it's 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 only about 16 stitches up there and so it's annoying because this is the only 15 circulars i have which will be fine when i do the larger areas of the sweater but for doing this part which is the cow neck it's annoying so that's why I got the straights, so I can do that part of the sweater on the straights. The only size straights that I didn't have was a size 15. I have everything from a from a, a 20 to a 35 to the great big 60 millimeters, but I didn't have a size 15. Go figure. So I have some now. All right, so I'm going to show you guys what I got from there. I also, she also has like some little knickknacks there now. So she had these little books, little project books. And inside the book cover, you have stickies and flags you can use to flag your notes or to flag your patterns and things like that. So I thought that was cute. She also had these clear project bags now. She said this was the last one. They had it for the James River yarn crawl, I believe. So I got this one, which was the last one there. Very happy with that. So those are my purchases. And this fire, this yarn is from Anzula. It's called, it's a, the Nebula Finger and Sock Weight Yarn. Um, it is called Olivia. Because remember I said it looks like, makes it uh, the olive, olive green colors. And it's 84% superwash merino and 16% sparkling stellina. And it has 400 plus yards. So yeah. It's beautiful. And I have I have some green and some Malabrigo that would be a great offset color for that as well. 
So that's going to go back in this bag of my local yarn shop purchases. And then I went to Michael's. I'm still working on my gift card. I still have 40 bucks on that gift card. So I thank my daughter again for my Christmas present. And um, so this was my second trip to Michael's. So. Uh, this ain't part of the Michael's. This is yarn I was giving away to somebody. He bought it back at the house. So of course, I got me two candles when I went. I got another of the peach, vanilla peach tea candle. I think it's like the a la vanilla peach, vanilla peach tea. I don't know how to speak French, so but vanilla peach tea candle. And I got the prisms. I've been collect trying to get the prism um, needles as they show up at my Michael store. I got some acrylic paint because some of y'all know I dabble with mixed media art and art in general. And so here's the other candle. It is the Honey Pear. Uh, this is a favorite. I get this all the time. And I save my plastic bags because I use them as garbage bags in the bathroom. So they get reused. All right, and so the yarn I got was the uh, purple ombre from Craft Smart. I got four of those, so that's what they look like. And I also got to try one of these. Now this yarn. This Caron Blossom Cakes, it's the yarn that has the knit, um, the knit coating, and then it has like a solid like fiber on the inside. But this yarn is why um, right before AC Moore uh, was bought out and closed down, this yarn was in their sample bins. Uh, AC, uh, what is it called? Studio by Nicole will put out these little bonbon samples that were a dollar each and these yarns were in there right before they shut down i still haven't seen that one that i really liked i made my husband i bought a bunch of those little um small bonbons and i made him a scarf i will get it so i can show it to you just give me one second Okay, so this is the colorway that I had got from the studio by Nicole to make the scarf for my husband. And I love it. But I haven't seen this colorway um, in any of the yarn that Michael has put out since they bought out uh, AC Moore. And um, like I said, it was in those little one ounce, one ounce uh, balls. Not, not one ounce. I don't know how many ounces was in the little ball, but it couldn't, it wasn't much because the little balls were like only like that big around and maybe that long. Um, but I bought enough of them. Every time I would go to my I'll go to AC Moore, I would go and see if they had any more back there for this colorway, and I just kept adding on to my my husband's scarf until it was big enough. And um, this is that bush stitch that I tell y'all is my go-to stitch for something fast something pretty, something easy that people think you work really hard on. <laughs> um, and like I said, it looks good with variegated yarn. It looks good with solid stripes. It doesn't matter. This stitch will work it. Uh, but yeah, my, my daughter, my youngest daughter is always stealing his scarves. I make him. And most of his scarves are, you know, more on the masculine side of browns and reds and whatnot. And um, 
but she's always still in his scars, even though she has a lot of stuff I made for her shawls and scars and cows and purples, which is was is her color, but she's always taking her dad's stuff. So so like I said about that yarn, I still haven't seen Michaels come out with any of it or anybody else. I haven't seen anybody come out with that colorway yet. And so I'm hoping that they will. This is greener than what's showing up on camera. Yeah, it's 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 a lot greener in the blues or like a, a blue jean blue that's in there. So but that's the, all the yarn that I got. And only other thing I got was they had um the prim ergonomic size 15s. And so I got me a set of those from them. And I made sure both the needles was in the box. <laughs> like I said, why would you steal just one needle out of a box? Are like you going to come back later and steal the other needle? It didn't make no sense. It didn't make no sense whatsoever. So, yeah. So, I got these because they're longer in case while I'm working on this sweater. Depends on, you know, what's more comfortable for me while I'm working the sweater. So yeah, so these are longer than the ones from out of my um, local yarn store. So I got those. And I still have 40 bucks left on my gift card. My daughter hooked me up. So happy. But like I said, for next year, I tell her, get one of those Visa gift cards and put the money up there. That way I can shop at all my favorite yarn hunts, not just Michael's. <laughs> all right, so get that back in there. But that was my my little expedition this morning. And so now what I'm going to do is I am going to clean off my desk. And I'm going to switch my cameras. And I'm going to show y'all how to do the Jamie stitch, also known as the bush stitch, in the round. Or the bush stitch, also known as the Jamie stitch, in the round. So I'm going to show y'all how to do that. And we're going to start a hat. We might not finish it, but y'all have the idea of what to do to make that particular pattern. So let me clean my desk off. Y'all talk amongst yourselves while I put this stuff up. I don't go shopping very often, but since I got a gift card, I got probably one more trip in me. And then that'll be the end of that card. So yeah, the Hey, pudding. That Star Wisp is my daughter, Yvonne, aka Pudding. Type in purple, and it'll share out your YouTube channel. All right, I'm gonna be. Well, I can do it back in here anytime. Clear the desk off. Oh, so what am I working on besides the, the grandpa sweater? I also started, um, this is the last of the um, yarn that uh, my friend sent me that wasn't still in this, you know, full skeins and whatnot, the partial skeins. And this is from a project that she has started. This is Peyton's. So, and it's worse it's wool. Um, and it has some um, sparklies in there. Like, um, it's hard to see. When you're outside in the sun, you see it more. Uh, almost like a fiber optic kind of effect. But um, I'm making another scarf with that. This is the last ball of that yarn that I have. So, it'll make a decent, it's going to make a decent size scarf. And, um... And it's, it's, this yarn has been a joy to work with. Uh, Peyton's is a typically a, a work workhorse type of yarn. This is very soft, though, so this must be some of their better yarn. And I'm working on that. I'm using a J-hook. Let me put that hook in there and get it. And zip it shut so I don't lose any of it. These little plastic bags that you get with your pillowcases and sheets and all that stuff, the ones with the zippers, 
they make great little project bags. You can see what's in them. You can zip them up so your stuff don't fall out. And there you go. My little project ready to go. So let me move my cup and get this desk cleared off some so that I can show you guys what I'm up to. Show y'all what I'm working with. Luna's trying to get attention with her. Some of her coughing is real. Some of her coughing is fake. But don't y'all tell her that I know. <laughs> Let me move my apple and my orange. Let me hide those because she acquired the ones I left in here when I went on my little trip this morning. And her mama said that she didn't even eat it. And then her mama said she didn't eat it neither. They're wasting my food. Okay. This is over there. Needle over there. Some pattern. Art book. I got a lot of stuff on my desk. I cleaned it off for the new year and get right back to clutter, being cluttered. These are my spinning wheel earrings. And these are the buttons that I picked out for my grandson's cardigan that's hanging up back there. I still ain't sold them on. But it's going to get there. <laughs> Since I plan on being around for a while this morning, but today it's evening now, it's afternoon now. We're going to get there. And put in Yvonne Star Wisp. She's supposed to be making uh, some buttons for Luna. I got the purple sparkly yarn. Her your Luna's yarn came in. So it's that um, Hobby Lobby grape. What's it called? Grape sparkle. Where did I put it? So this is Luna's yarn. It's that Hobby Lobby Grape It, which is that great sparkle yarn for her jacket. All right. Yarn I'm gonna use and my hook I'm gonna use. I guess I can use a J so y'all be able to see the stitches easy. So let me find a J. All right, so that's a J. Yeah, that's a J. And let's pick a yarn. So we're gonna use this. This is Mary Maxim. Their Econo, their Maximum Value yarn. That's the name of it. And so we're gonna use that yarn. So it depends on how this hook feels when I'm using it. As you can see, the hooks, the style of the hooks are different. That's because one just says susan bates and the other one says susan bates and it was made in mexico so it depends on where it's made it depends on how the hook looks and feels and how it crochets so i'll show y'all as you can see the style on the hook 
is different. One is short and the other one is longer and has more of a point. So it will determine how it crochets. So for this project, if you're going to do the project with me, go ahead and get you some yarn. Um, we are going to chain 60 stitches. Leave a little tail in case you miscount. You can always add some stitches at the end. But we're going to chain 60. Thirty six, fifty, and then sixty. So we have our sixty stitch. Oh, I got to switch cameras. Hold on one second. <laughs> Okay, let me see if I can get this thing to switch over to the other camera. Give me a sec. Forgot all about that. It's not working. Thank you. 
Yay! I got it to work. <laughs> All right, so so we did sixty stitches. All right, and so what we're gonna do is the second chain from the hook. We're gonna go into under two of these loops on that chain, and we're gonna yarn over and go through, yarn over and pull it through. You should have three loops on your your hook. And we're going to do a double crochet. We're going to yarn over, go under two, yarn over, go under two. And now that those two chains you skip is your first double crochet. And you just did a double crochet. And then you're going to chain two. Actually, we're the one in the round. Okay, so we're going to yarn over. And we're going to do one more double crochet into that same chain since we're doing this in the round. You'll see why we do that when we get back around to the end. All right, now we're going to chain two, and we're going to go up under in that same chain and do a single crochet, and that's your first completed stitch. We don't count those first two chains that were on the hook. Those are always going to be an uh, entity unto themselves because we're going to be working in the round. So now we're going to yarn over. We're going to skip the next two chains, and in that third chain, we're going to do two double crochet. So one double crochet. That's our second double crochet, chain two, and another single crochet in that same chain space. We're going to skip two chains. In the third chain, we're going to do two double crochet. Chain two, single crochet in the same chain space. And we're going to do this all the way to the end. Okay, skip two chains in the third chain, two double crochet, chain two, and single crochet in the same space. That's how easy this stitch is. Two double crochet, chain two, single crochet, skip two chains, two double crochet, chain two, single crochet. Skip two, two double crochet, chain two, single crochet in the same chain. All oh, this is in the same chain. Remember, you always do it in the same chain. Do your single crochet, skip two double crochet in that third, I mean, two single, two chains in that third chain. Do your two double crochet, chain two, and single crochet in that same chain space. And we're going to do this all the way to the end. So y'all keep going. Let's 
skip to make sure chain two single crochet skip to two double crochet in the third chain chain two single crochet skip two in the third one two double crochet chain two single crochet in that same space skip two chains in the third one two double crochet single crochet chain two and then single crochet Do this all the way over. Now you have to start thinking about how do you want your head. Do you want it to be slightly slouchy? Do you want it to be more of a beanie style hat? Because that will determine how um, big you want this project to be. Um, if you want it to be a beanie style, then since it's an adult hat, um, 60 stitches on a, on a J-hook might be a bit much. But if you want it to be a slouchy hat, then you can do a brim on it and you can tighten up the fit of the brim portion of the hat, um, which will be ribbed in our case. We'll do a half double crochet rib for the for the brim section, which we'll do after the hat is finished for more of a slouchy style hat. But if you want it to be a beanie, you could also do one or two rows of a crab stitch or a single crochet or a double half double cro half double crochet to tighten up that brim and make it look more neat neat well, to make it look neater. So anybody got any questions for me so far? Oh, the scarf around my neck. This is from one of my knitting friends, uh, Jessica. And uh, she gave it to me during the last Maryland Sheep and Wool. And it is very comfortable. I love wearing it. It keeps my dreads off the back of my neck. This is what I mostly use it for. So I need to make some more of these cows for myself. It's small. It's lightweight. It's not hot or itchy. So yeah. All right. All right, coming towards the end. And we're going to do our last. I if I can't get it in there. So this is what you could do if you have too many stitches at the end. Or if it's tight and you can't get your hook in. Just take and pull that tail a little bit. That'll loosen that last stitch up. And so you can work your, your stitch in there. See, now I can get my hook in there just fine. So you can loosen that little stitch up so that you can use it. Just by pulling on the tail end of that yarn and pulling it through. 
so that you can do your last stitch if you didn't have enough stitches you could also make stitches using that little bit of tail that you left so that your stitch count could be right so now what we're going to do is we're going to chain two up and we're going to churn our work but we're going to straighten out our what we have so far and then we're going to basically lay it lay it over itself and we're going to have a look at it this is where you determine whether or not your project might be too big or too small. You can always put a hat that you wear over it to see if it's in line with what you want. But you also have to remember that we're gonna be putting a brim, a real brim on this hat. So we can always make that portion smaller. So what we're gonna do now is, normally we would turn our work and we would go back in this direction, but we need to join this in the round. Remember we did an extra, had an extra double crochet there, so our stitch would be complete. So what we're going to do now is instead of chaining two and turning our work, we are going to slip stitch over to the top of that first uh, double crochet, which is actually the chain two from when we started our project. So we're going to slip stitch over and slip stitch that in over here. And now we're going to chain two up. Okay. And what you got to do is you got to make sure that your project is not twisted. So you always want to make sure it's not twisted. So you're going to go ahead and look and make sure. And if it is twisted, then you got to unfit it. Right now at this point is where you got to untwist it before you even get started. So just lay it down flat. Make sure all your humps are lined up. And see mine is twisted. So I need to take and make sure this is straight and get all my tails out of the way and now i can rejoin with a slip stitch to make sure my work isn't twisted if i can find my end what do we put it in there again okay here's my end make sure i have to keep keep it not so it doesn't get twisted That's the top of that stitch. And so we're just going to go ahead and slide it up under there. Get that tail out your way so you get the right yarn. This is the only fiddly part of this project is making sure it's not twisted. And pull that through. And now you want to chain two up. Okay, so now your work isn't twisted. And so now you're going to take and you're going to churn your work. Because now you have your chain two space. Grandma, ready to make root beers. I don't have any more root beer, Luna. Here. Here. Oh. Okay. I'm back. All right. So. We chain two up, and now we're going to do the, the bush stitch in our chain two space, okay? So you're going to go into that chain two space. You're going to do two double crochet, chain two, single crochet. And you're going to do this in each chain two space. Your chain two spaces should be to the right of your hook. So they should be right here. And so you're going to do two double crochet. chain two, single crochet in those chain two spaces. Hey, it's not magic. And we're going to do that all the way around until we get back to where we do our slip stitch and chain two up. And you, then you turn your work. And you're just going to be doing that, going back and forth, turning your work. And that's how you do this stitch in the round. You can use it for hats. You can use it for sweaters. Uh, you know, the, the world is your oyster now with this stitch. Doing it in the round okay, for making hats, making cute hats, cute berets, however you want to do it. So... 
she's mad now because I I buy those um drink packets you add it to the water because they don't have any sugar they only have like two grams of carbohydrates but they don't have any sugar alcohols or any sugar sugar added to it and so it's better for her for her teeth and stuff and so i ran out i gotta order some more of the root beer ones because that's the one that i like and that's the one that she likes it don't have that, that nasty aftertaste to it and so that's why she brought her water bottle in here because she wanted a root beer packet but i ran out i gotta order some more i get them off of amazon and so now she's mad at me she's at that age where she runs off and runs tells that grandma won't make me a root beer or grandpa did this or boy boy won't do this he runs off and tells her mama like that's gonna change anything <laughs> oh so this I'm not enjoying this hook. It could just be the way I'm leaning on this desk, though, too. Normally, I crochet. I have my arms tucked close to my side. And that way, only thing moving is my fingers and my wrists. My arms are tucked down. They're not moving. And I can get up to speed like this. And um, But this hook... I need to just go through and do projects and each hook that I don't like needs to go into the I don't want you anymore pile <laughs> and I just need to get rid of them um, because not all hooks are made equal and, and especially for Susan Bates hooks the ones from the 70s 80s 90s they were made in the United States when Susan Bates had her own meal I guess um, needle making place up north I think it was in New England and um, and then they sent them out to be made in Mexico which those were still pretty good quality back in the 90s and early 2000s but when they sent them to be made in China the quality became crap and uh so a lot of people like me were going to thrift stores, looking for the older hooks, buying the older hooks where we could find them at thrift stores, at state sales or wherever, trying to find those older hooks. I'm not a boy person, even though that's what I learned on. But um, I'm not a boy, boy hook person. All right. So see, we're back around to that beginning. That's that two double, the two chains right there. We're just going to slide up under them. We're not going to go through a loop or anything. We're just going to slide up under them. Do our slip stitch and chain two and then turn our work and go back the opposite direction as you can see here's our chain two space loop and that's the bush stitch in the round guys that's how easy it is to do it in the round um and you just go into your chain two spaces going back the other way and when you finish you do your slip stitch here's your chain two up you do your slip stitch under there and you keep going and so it won't be uh, Andrea's fault. It will line up very well um, going up the back of this project. Um, and it'll look nice. So we're just going to keep going. Anybody got any questions? Yeah, like her mama is going to override me. I'll be like, well, it's, it's time for y'all to leave. Time y'all go find your own spot. <laughs> uh, but Luna, she's going to be four on her birthday. Can y'all believe that? My little g monster going to be four years old. It's crazy. So I'm just going to work my way back over.
And if you want it to be less lacy, um, like Sandrine was talking about the other day, you could use that um the other stitch where you don't do the chain two. You just double crochet and then do the single crochet. And so it's not as lacy and airy as this um this stitch, but they're all in that same stitch family. And I think hers is called a cloud stitch, she said. Whereas you would just do the two double crochet and then you would single crochet. And so you end up with a, a stitch like that. So you don't have that big loop. You just have that little spot between the last the double crochet and the single crochet to go into when you go back around. And I think she said it was a cloud stitch. There's also a stitch called a Paris stitch which is similar where I think the Paris stitch, you do one double crochet, chain two, single crochet. So it, there's a whole family of, of that particular um, pattern, so to speak, with different variations out there where you can play around with the look of different ones. You can mix and match. Um, just, just you come up with a nice texture. It's not real. It's not complicated. It's not hard to do. The hardest part is is starting it and trying making sure your beginning chain is correct. All right. So we're at the last chain two space, and so now we're up on that um, chain two, which does not count as a stitch. It's simply our way of joining each end together, and so we're gonna slip stitch that chain two up, and then turn our work. And go back. Hello, new figure grandma creates. That's two double crochet, chain two, single crochet in each chain two space back around. Yes, if you do the chain one, you're still gonna get a border. Um, because it's gonna that chain, what that chain does is it helps form that little dip between like the little dip between the little hump that's what that does it lowers the stitch down and that's what forms that little hump and that little hump um like it's not as it's not as noticeable on the bottom of this work but we're going to be picking up those stitches to do the to do a brim on the bottom anyway but if you look at like my husband's scarf this scarf is probably three years old now. So if you look at it, you see how on the side he has, you have the little a border. And on this side, you, you have the little border where you're turning your work and going back and forth. So, so that way you end up, if this was a blanket, you could imagine that you would have, like you got it on this end and it's not as noticeable on this end, but it's still barely there on the end you started on. Um, but if you're going to do a blanket, you know how you have the part that has a straight edge. Like on regular blankets, you got the part where you can tell the wide part uh, where it's the top of the blanket. Then like the other end would be like the decorative end of the blanket. So you could do it like that if you wanted to. Or you could go in and you can actually take a piece of yarn and you see right here, I don't know if you can see right. You can actually take a piece of yarn and go in and just cinch those, pick like uh, whip around and then just cinch it to form the edging on the bottom. You see what I'm saying? To make it look exactly like the other end. You can actually, each of these little spaces, you can cinch it down to form that little hump. And it probably only take you about two or three minutes to do that. But I don't have any more of this yarn, so I just left it like it was. He's a man. He really don't care, and I don't care. <laughs> um, but if you're a perfectionist and you want him to look exactly like, that's one way that you can do it so that you can make sure that, that those ends match. Just take your piece of yarn and go down there and just tack in that chain one space on the opposite, on the, on the beginning chain, and then you have your little humps down there as well so 
So let's see about this one. See how it feels. Hook wise. So. So she ran off to her mama. So this one is um, tighter. As far as grabbing a yarn. it, But it's. Like this side is deeper than this side. That's what I don't understand how the molds got changed so much from place to place. And see now it pops off because the size on this one is shallow. Then they should be. I mean, this makes it look longer, but it's not. The sides aren't as deep. See how that is like it's real short inside. And you look at this one, even though the top the hook part. Is shorter, the cut goes up deeper so it catches the yarn better. So, basically, that is how you work the, the pattern going back and forth to make a hat or to make another item in the round a cow, it could be a cow. Or a hat. If it's too big to be a hat, then just let it be a cow. Make a hat later. <laughs> but um, so it's, it's it's fast, it's easy, it's fun, it's attractive. I mean, this pattern is a win-win for lots of different projects you might have where you only got um a, a small amount of yarn, or you got a bunch of yarn you want to use up. Um. You can make small projects or you can make like I've used this pattern to make fingerless gloves before and um, and whatnot. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all how I decrease when I'm making a beanie um, or a hat with this pattern. So when we get back to the other end, I will show you all how to do the decreases for a hat. And that paper is annoying me. Looks like antiques to match you, huh? <laughs> I need to make them sure I remember to order. Um, order drink mixes. <laughs> All right, so we're back at our chain two space. So we're going to go up under there, do our slip stitch, and do our chain two space, churn the work, do our first um, bush stitch, two double crochet, chain two, single crochet. Now, I will probably do like the first three or four of these, and then I will work my decrease. And the way I work my decrease is like you do most of your double crochet decreases. I'm going to not yarn over. I'm just going to slip under that first, that next stitch. I'm going to yarn over and pull it through. And then I'm going to slip under the next stitch beside that. I'm going to yarn over and pull it through. That puts three chains on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and do a double crochet. And then I'm going to do a double crochet, chain two, single crochet. And I just decreased one uh bush stitch off of my work and i'm going to keep going i'm going to do another five i'm not going to count the one i just did a decrease the next five i'm going to do five 
Yeah, here, let me see. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. And that's five. And so next we're going to do another decrease. Okay. We're going to go under that chain two space, yarn over and pull a loop through. We're going to go to the next chain two space, yarn over, pull a loop through. Now we have three loops on our hook and we're going to do a double crochet. We're going to yarn over, go under two, yarn over, go under two, do one double crochet, chain two, and single crochet under that chain two space. And we just did another decrease. And as you can see, it is hard for you to find where we did that decrease in that pattern. So it's, it's not very obvious where you did your decreases at, but you just did two decreases. And so you have probably, since each of these are about a half an inch, so now you just decrease the top of that project by almost an inch. You can tell if you look how now it's, it's going to start bowing up a little bit because you're doing your decrease rows, your decreases. And so we're going to do another five, and then we'll do a decrease if there's enough stitches left. If not, then we'll pull one back and then do a decrease. That's two. That's um yes ma'am if you look on my channel about four videos back you will find the jamie stitch bush stitch tutorial crochet tutorial and it's the same stitch i'm using to show y'all how to work it in the round so that's four this is five And so now we're going to go under the next stitch, pull up a loop. We're going to go under the next chain two space, pull up a loop. We're going to do a double crochet. We're going to do one double crochet, chain two, and single crochet in that same chain two space. All right. And so that's like about an inch and a half that we've decreased. And this is two. three this is four and five okay so we don't we don't have enough to go and do another decrease so we're going to just go ahead and do our slip stitch chain two up and then turn our work but you can see now how it's bowing up some on the sides from doing those decreases since we're doing a hat so it's starting to go into that dome shape and that's how you would do your decreases like you do a regular row then do a row of decreases do a regular row do a row of decreases and um you do like like we did it every five so the next row decreases, we do it every four. So you're doing like a regular row. Let me see. So if this is your hat, it's going like this. Okay. And so you have your decrease row. And then you have your regular row. Then you have your decrease row. Then you have your regular row. And you're going to do that until you get to about here on your hat um and then you're going to determine about how you want your hat to continue do you want to have one of the more flatter tops where you just go ahead and cinch them all together or do you want it to continue into like a little point in which case you'll do another row of decreases and so you'll have more of a pointy top to your hat it depends on your personal preference if you're going to put a um pom-pom on it then you can have it become more of a little pointy top to your hat um but you just continue your decreases like that to form your head i like to wait until i have about maybe seven or eight of these left on the top like this like pretend that that's the top of your head this is all you have left after you did all your decreases 
And then what I do is I'll take my, I'll cut it, my yarn about eight or nine inches and I'll take my darning needle and I'll go and I'll cinch under each of these stitches along the top of this hat. And then I'll cinch it and fill it and um, cinch it and secure it so that this top portion is, there's no big gap. And then that's it. My hat's done. And you can add a pom-pom up there if you want to or whatever. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show y'all how I pick up the stitches for the brim. I can find my scissors that I just had. Okay. So if you go back to your brim, you find where you started your project. Okay. And you're going to take your yarn. And see, this is where it starts at. And so you're going to go. You might want to switch to a smaller hook. So I will go back to an H hook, maybe. Or uh, this is a I. Uh, let me see if I got an H in here. Probably not. Because you're only doing a half double crochet brim. Okay. So that's the top part. You take your, if you don't want your end to get pulled out, take a um, a locking stitch holder, stitch marker, and then just pull down on it. And that way your end won't get pulled out, okay? So we're going to find this end down here. And we're going to go up under there stitch like that and get our yarn and we cast on 60 so I would advise you to pick up at least 58 to 50 to 60 stitches and basically just gonna pick up that stitch I'm gonna hold these let me make sure I got the wrong end. Hold on. <laughs> make sure you got the right end. Let me wrap this around here so it will be out of my way. All right. Yeah, she got mad with me. I thought about her donuts and everything. She got mad with her grandma. A little mean thing. All right, there we go. Now make sure we got our, our yarn is attached to our yarn ball. Yarn will pull it through that loop and then just go ahead and chain up one. And this is our end. And this is the end of our yarn that we attached. And I'm going to hold those. And we're going to pin those bad boys down. So you see you have this long string. You don't want to go up under there. Because then your where you join in it is gonna be weak. You want to go through these chains that you see right here. There's a chain right there. See how you got this chain right here? You don't want to go up under there because that'll make your brim weak. You want to go in these chains. You want to go up under two of those. See, there's two there. It's kind of like it's twisted. But there's two strands right there. That's where you want to go up under. Okay. So we're doing half double crochets. So you're going to yarn over. You're going to go up under those strands. Yarn over, pull through. And then you're going to yarn over and go through all three of the chain or the loops on your hook. And then you, there's another one right here. So you're going to yarn over and you go up under that one. Okay. And yarn over and pull through all three. We're gonna we're not gonna go up under this string that's by itself. 
we're always going to go up under this part so that way we go under two strings you always want two above that because it'll make your brim stronger and you won't have that big gap see now we don't have that great big long gap like you see right here that your finger can go up under you don't want that and so we're gonna always go up under this the this chains that form a v stitch basically it's a v stitch like a regular chain that's where we're going to put our stitches at okay not up under this and we're going to do that all the way around and i'm not counting i rarely count on stuff like this it's just a hat if you want to count mark down how many exactly you did go for it i know from experience that i'm doing approximately three which these this the stitch if you think about it it's it's in threes plus the two when you did your first chain so as long as i'm doing three and skipping this one i should be good with my count being close to 58 to 60 stitches at the end and sometimes you gotta work it up in there it all depends on if your tension is even or not I mean, things happen. Sometimes our tension gets wonky. It ain't the end of the world. The purpose of crocheting and knitting and stuff is to enjoy it. If if we wanted stuff that looked like stuff out of the factories and the mills, then what's the purpose of doing it ourselves? That's why it's called homemade or handmade. Sometimes handmade don't look like handmade, and that is okay too. If you're if you're that skillful. That it looks like it came off a machine and then more power to you but sometimes you want to make stuff that people know i made these with my two hands it didn't come out of the store you can't buy this in the store and therefore it's more valuable than some of that mess you're buying out the store so this is what it does it gives you an edge like that to work from when you go back and start picking up your stitches to make your ribbon it gives you a nice neat edge to work off of and take your time doing this section and you'll appreciate it when you get to actually working with those stitches make sure you're do up on the two of them. There we go. And you might have to pull your yarn sometimes to see you. My eyes ain't what they used to be. <laughs> you got them 50 year old eyes now. So sometimes I have to look a little extra hard to get, get exactly where I need to go. <laughs> Hi, our treasure home. Hey, everybody that's out here hanging out with us today. Anybody got any questions? Feel free. I'll try to catch them. chair let me see this thing is hurting me if i can rest my wrist up here on this here oh the pain and the suffering for the scarf if you're gonna do a scarf yeah i will start with a multiple of 20. the 20 is good for doing a dishcloth too If you want one if you want a wider scarf then start with 30 chains and that's with worsted weight yarn 
Now, if you're going to be using a fingering weight yarn or something like that, you're going to have to play with your count to get the width you need or want. You gonna make your cousin a lap game? I'm telling you, once you once you do this stitch, it's it's like you get addicted to it. Ask my friend Ashley. <laughs> I think she taught it. She taught it to her sister. I think either her sister or her mom, but she taught it to one of her family members too. I'm telling you, it's like the go-to fall back on pattern for baby blankets for me, for scarves, for when I want to burn through some stash. Um, like I've been doing with that yarn that my friend gifted me. Uh, all like the odds and ends, the partial skeins and stuff. I've been, I done blew through all of it except I only have one left that I'm working on of her partial skeins of yarn. And um, and then everything else has labels on it and it's the full skeins and stuff. And then I'll just fin figure out projects for that, you know, as as I need to. But um, I don't like having like a lot of bunch of partial skeins hanging around because that's when stuff gets tangled up and yeah, I just want to go ahead and get that stuff taken care of as soon as possible so that, you know, you don't have to deal with all these loose threads and stuff like that. All right, so we're almost back around. Let's see what this one is going to be. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, like I said, you could play around with the stitch. You could make it what you need it to be. If you want it to be lacy, if you want it not to be lacy, um, you could also, instead of it to not be so lacy, you could also go down to a smaller hook. So if you don't want to use like a J or, or a larger hook, you could go down to an H hook, something like that, and then it won't be as open and lacy because the stitches are going to be smaller. All right, so we have made it back. I forgot to carry my, I didn't carry one of them, so I'll trap it later on. So we're back at the beginning. So now I'm just going to slide up under there and do a slip stitch and then chain two up. And since we're going to be doing a rib, now all we have to do is yarn over and go under it front post and we're doing half double crochet ribbing so yarn over go the back post yarn over front post yarn over back post and we just do that all the way around to do our rib for the brim of the hat using half double crochet instead of double crochet just front post and back post and sometimes I actually pick up these stitches with a knitting needle and I do and I'll knit a real brim 
for my hats because then it'll be um it'll be nice and stretchy but the shape of it will snap back faster than what you usually see with uh, crochet brim and since a lot of y'all learning how to knit um now but i like mixing crochet with knitting i did it with my Towel. Isn't your isn't your tissue on the bed in your in your in your block box on your what do you call them things? I'm just always stepping on them, hurt my feet. Front back, Legos. She got a whole box of tissues in there, in one of her Lego boxes. But she wants to come in here and harass Grandma. So we're just doing front post, back post, but instead of using a double crochet, we're using half double crochets. And I'm and I drop down to an H hook from a J to do the ribbing. And now she's going looking for her dada to harass him. And she told her mom and daddy that this was her house. She tells us that all the time that this is her house. <laughs> oh. She tell her Aunt Michelle, Aunt Michelle, I'm going home to my house. And my sister just laughs at her. And she's like, Grandma, I want some candy. Be careful, girl. What you want? I love you. I love you too, little girl. I like a piece of candy. Mm, you want a piece of candy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, here, here. This one? Oh, here. Oh, here. Share it with Grandpa. Go ahead. Grandpa, I'm going to get these candy, Grandpa. Mm -hmm. See, I told you, I'm psychic. I know my granddaughter. <laughs> She's supposed to share with you. She was supposed to share with her. I gave it to her. Huh? Girl, take that candy and go eat it. Hush. If he don't want none, don't give him none. Just eat it yourself. You hush. Leave it alone. Yeah, come sit down here. Sit in your chair. Close the door and eat your piece of candy. Be quiet. Just sit over there in your chair and, and don't pay him no mind. He being mean and ugly. Grandma's spanking when she get done. Y'all start harassing me. Front, back, front, back. Okay. And don't be laughing at me, VJ. I can hear you now cackling. Both of them need to take a nap. Both of them. The old person and the young person. <laughs> he need to take a nap too. Here's his punishment for making her cry for me to have to listen to it. 
and chain one up and we're going to turn our work and so now you can see the front post back post front post back post of your half double crochet brim and so you just go back you turn your work and you do your front post and your back post of your brim until your brim is as long as you want it to be and that is how I put the brim on my bush stitch hats and you can just front pose back pose to your heart's content Tell them they're having a siesta. <laughs> he was fussing at her because she had a donut and she hadn't eaten her donut yet. Well, sometimes them Krispy Kreme donuts are too sweet, so she probably didn't want it. Well, she was probably wanting like we didn't get any plain ones this time. All of them were filled donuts this time, so she probably wanted her plain old, you know, chocolate covered donut instead of the cream filled donut the custard you got your water be careful with it okay i'm gonna order us some more of the flavor packets so you don't have to have no hissy fit them more Probably she don't make my son make us some tea. She said, Grandma, Uncle Boy Boy made me some yummy, yummy tea. It's a peach, peach tea. But I'm going to show y'all what's so nice about this half double crochet brim. On your hats is it's it's attractive just as attractive as a double crochet front post back post brim and it's nice and stretchy but it to me it looks neater than the double crochet one that's just for me I don't know other people might like the double crochet one better but it's, it's like each to your own you have the you pick up the different skills and techniques and stuff and some things you like better than what somebody else might like tension rings i don't have no tension rings this is a finger cuff to keep me from burning up my finger when i'm going real fast um i don't know if you look at my skin on my finger from all those years of crocheting there is a there's a couple of, of, of permanent scars there lines where i actually you can see that line that comes across right there that's from all the years of crocheting can you see it there you go there's a line on my finger that's a perm that's permanent scar <laughs> but i love i love um this finger cuff when i started wearing these finger cuffs i have several now this is my wedding bands. My different pregnancies changed the size of my way my wedding band fit. And then when I lost a lot of weight. So this last wedding band, my husband got me to keep the other two from falling off. <laughs> it's white gold. It's, probably, it's one of the only metals that don't irritate my skin is white gold and copper. Um, Uh, yeah, I don't I don't use tension rings. I wrap my yarn around my pinky finger, up under and around, and I hold it the same way when I'm knitting. Right, this is our second row of the 
half double crochet front post back post brim okay and then we're gonna go over here and slip stitch and so you can see how that brim has cinched that hat together and it's nice and stretchy but not as stretchy as a double crochet brim would be but you can see it it's nice and it's neat and it holds your hat together and like I said, it depends on how many stitches you pick up, um, how wide this would be. Like this hat will now be more like for, uh, like with my dreadlocks, it would be very tight on my head. I mean, I couldn't get it over all my dreadlocks, but a regular adult could wear this hat, a child could wear this hat. But for me with my dreadlocks, I would need a looser brim. So I would have to, if I was going to make this for me, I will have to go back and make sure that I have a minimum of 60, probably 66 stitches picked up. So I will actually have to do some increases to have 66 stitches so that this will be wide enough to go over my dreadlocks. But um, that is the basics of working a hat in the round for the bush stitch. So you know how to pick up the stitches to put your brim on. Um, if you want the brim to be looser, then do a double crochet brim. If you want a tighter brim, do a half double crochet brim. If you want an even smaller brim, tighter brim for like a child, like if this is make like a, a puffy hat for a child, for a um, slouchy hat for a child, then you can even do a single crochet front post, back post brim, and that'll make it very small for a child. Um, like I said, I like the look of the half double crochet brim, especially when you're picking up the stitches to put it up there. So it looks, I love the look of it. And it's still got some stretch in it. But it's not as stretchy as a double crochet brim would be. Um, so if you want a, a brim that's going to snap back faster, um, then I would do a half double crochet. But remember, you have to, because it's half the size of a double crochet stitch, it's not going to be as um, elastic as the double crochet stitch. So if you want it to still be for like someone like me who has a lot of dreadlocks, so you have thicker hair, you might have to add more stitches to make sure that brim is going to fit that person's head if you're making it for an adult that has really thick hair, dreadlocks, or, you know, they like wearing a hair in plait, big plaits and stuff like that. For more more ethnic style hats or somebody that likes to have, they have real long hair and they like to shove all their hair up on their head, <laughs> something like that. Yes, a single crochet would be tighter and less stretchy. Which would mean you would have to add stitches. You have to do increases. So instead of so this was 60 stitches that we originally started with for the hat. So instead of doing 60 stitches for the brim, when you came back to pick up the stitches, you might have to pick up 66 stitches, or you might have to do a couple increases when you pick up those stitches, so that you will have 66 to 70 stitches to make sure that brim is elastic enough to go over someone who has a lot of hair or somebody that might what we call them a five head they got a, their head that ain't the size of a normal human being they they got the alien head you might have to make their hat bigger for they that big brain <laughs> oh white lady hair but like but i'm telling y'all look how pretty that is though if you imagine if the hat was finished you know, just imagine the hat was finished. I mean, look how pretty that stitch is for a hat, too. So that's what I'm saying. This this pattern is very versatile. <laughs> a big old, big old alien head. A five head. Like my husband with his big head. You got to be fat for head. And so, so that would be your brim. And that
and I'm gonna show y'all how I weave in my ends. And what I need to be doing is I need to be putting the buttons on my grandson's jacket. It's almost three o'clock. Let's see. All right, so so I just pull it through like that and thread your needle. I just have a regular old bent tip needle. And I'm going to go into the back of this stitch because it's going to go on the inside. Those are my ends that I didn't finish weaving in because I got distracted and I forgot I was supposed to be holding them. And so I'm just going to go along that first ridge right here and then I'm going to cross over into the next stitch and I'm going to go up I'm doing this in the shape of a W because those of us who have industrious little people in our lives we know how they can sit and pick at something for hours if they're very interested in it. And so a child can find an end that you, you couldn't even hardly see. And they will figure out a way to unweave it. But if you go in this W formation, they might lose interest trying to figure out which way to go next. So now I'm going over here to this third one. I'm going down. Okay. And I'm going to slide down into where one of the um, loops is, stitches is, where you did your two double crochet and your single crochet. I'm gonna slide up under there. And now what I'm gonna do to finish off hiding this end is I'm gonna go every other loop around. So I'm gonna go under one, over one, under one, over one, and under one. And I'm gonna pull my yarn back through and now I'm gonna go back up I go into one of these stitches. I'm going back up. It it takes a little bit longer than some people want to spend weaving in the end, but it is so worth it because ain't no way Miss Luna is going to figure out what Grandma did. And she's going to get frustrated and she's going to give up because as far as she's concerned, it's in knots. And she won't never be able to take it back out. See, and now my end, I can I can trim that little end off. And I know my project is nice and secure. You can't even really, you can't tell where the end started at unless you made this hat. And now I got these two ends to weave in as well. The part of these are trapped when I went, when I did my first uh, part of that um Double, that half double crochet brim I trapped some of them but I forgot I was trapping it and then I stopped so I don't know how far back it goes so it, it, it's, it's not going to hurt nothing to weave those ends in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this hat eventually and um, I'll show it to you you guys on one of my updates that I do for the stuff I'm working on or has worked on and whatnot. So yeah, so I'm just going to weave these in. I don't have to be as industrious with these because they are trapped in other areas as well. But I'm still going to make sure over, under, over, under. I'm still going to make sure it's nice and that nobody can... Just sit there and say, well, there's one of her ends. Let me start pulling at it. Just tug it a little, make sure it ain't going nowhere. This isn't wool. If this hat was wool, I would soak it and block it before I trim my ends. Because with wool, those fibers are catch. They're not necessarily being felted, but they're kind of wrapping themselves and rubbing up against each other and the scales are locking together like the keratin of your own hair and through wear and tear and whatnot and lint um those ends will be so so locked in and woven in you'll never be able to pick them out again unless you completely like if you cut it and then start unraveling it that way and you come across the end and you just snip it 
keep doing it until you finish unraveling everything. But all right. And so now I can go back to the beginning over here and and what I usually do is I like knots so I'll knot it about this far up that's about two and a half three inches up I'll put a knot and I'll pull it tight and I'll show you what I do when I'm weaving in when I'm crocheting and knitting with a knot I made. Now, if I find a knot in something that I'm working on, like from the factory, what I do is I cut that yarn and I make my own knot. I don't trust the knots that's in there from the um, factory and stuff where they, where they air splice them together sometimes. And sometimes you'll find a, a, a knot. I make my own knot. So I'll cut their knot off and I'll knot it the way I like it to be knotted. And then I'm going to show y'all what I do when I'm weaving in that that back oh I'm using the wrong hook uh, I got to pull that out because a H hook is a lot different than a J hook so those stitches are a lot tighter and a lot smaller so you have if you find out you picked up the wrong hook it might behoove you if you want your stitches to be the same size to take the that stitch apart and and redo that stitch it was only one so it ain't gonna hurt nothing one part so okay so i'm getting to the part where i knot it all right so i'm gonna finish up that double crochet see my knot is kind of hidden in that double crochet and that's a good place for it to be but so now i'm gonna trap this yarn i'm gonna hold it over that chain two space I'm going to go up under it. I'm going to trap it. Do my chain two. And then I'm going to do my single crochet over that yarn again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this yarn to that next stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my... I'm going to take my uh, smaller crochet hook. Where is both the ends? There we go. And you see how you have a stitch here and a stitch opening here we're gonna we're gonna weave that yarn in through there and you could also just pick it up with your darning needle and weave it around so that's one we'll get the other one in there and that's two so now we got both our ends and so I'm just going to take and curve it under this one, through this one, and then I'm going to bring it out on the other side of that chain two space. Okay. Then we're going to pull it. All right. And so now we're going to pick up our working yarn. And we're going to do, we're going to hold this at the back of that chain two space and like, Curl it over like that and then hold it in place. Yarn over and do your double crochet, double crochet, chain two, and single crochet. And you just trap that yarn again under your working yarn. But because we wove it through that stitch in front of the stitches in front of this one, they're traveling and then getting trapped. So they're they're nice and neat and locked in. And you can do that. You can do it with your hook too, where you could just go under those two that stitch, pull that yarn around, go behind that next stitch like this, hold that yarn, pull it under it like that, and then now it's back over here to your next chain two space, and then you can trap it again. And that's just a it, it takes a few minutes. It's not it's not a hard thing. It ain't gonna be the end of the world if it took you a few extra seconds. To trap that yarn but what it does is it neatly hides that yarn where you where your knot was joined at and 
to the point where it's going to be hard for somebody to unravel your project and you won't have ends, crazy ends sticking up all over the place in your project. And be nice and neat. And you know how you hid your ends. So if you had to take this apart, you know what you have to do to take it apart. Because you remember how you hid your ends. You'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I trapped that yarn by going up around that little stitches. Okay. And so now this one is hidden. And so this one, I want to make sure it's nice and tightly trapped. So I'm putting a little bit more tension on that um stitch because these ends right here i need to trim off because remember i wrapped them around stitches so they're nice and trapped so i don't need to adjust the tension on them i can just trim those and just make sure you only trimming those two little ends and then just do a little tug and you're good to go ain't going nowhere <laughs> You say your ends stay even when you want them out. <laughs> oh. Oh. All right. So now this is a row, a regular row. The next row would be a decrease row. Let's see. We did five every five stitches the last time. This the next time. We'll do every um, four stitches. We'll do our decrease. But, yeah, I'll finish this hat. I done been up here almost two hours with y'all. And I'll finish it and then show y'all the finished hat. But that'll get y'all started. And it's, it's fun. It's trial and error. It's playing with yarn. It's having fun. You don't need to always see the whole project from beginning to end. Um, sometimes in order for people to learn, for you to learn, you need to actually do that project yourself. It makes it more memorable if you say, okay, I'm going to take some notes. All right, she got me right here. So I want to see how I want to do my, I'm going to take notes for how I did my hat all the way up to where I cinched up the top. And you keep that little book. I have a book. I've shown it to y'all before. Well, sometimes I write down ideas and, and patterns I'm playing around with in that book. I put people's hand measurements and feet measurements and stuff in there for my family members that I make stuff for. I put the, like when I did those fornicating deer hat for my friend, I have that written down in that book. So if I ever want to make another hat for him, it's written down in that book. I don't have to um, get his measurements again. I know what his fitted hat size is. <clears throat> and basically, you multiply their fitted hat size by pi, and you get the circumference of their head. And people tell you, well, I like my hat to be, you know, a little snug. So maybe you look at what a, a typical adult hat pattern is, and you subtract uh, two or three stitches instead of doing the, the normal count or you tell them well if you got an old hat that fits you the way you like you know can you mail it to me and i'll mail it back and then you could take measurements off of that hat you know and that way you have a better idea exactly the circumference of the hat how stretchy the brim is on that hat and it give you a better idea like you, you're basically reverse engineering somebody's favorite hat um, so that you have those numbers and you have an idea of what they need. That's three. So we got five more minutes and I'm going to let y'all go. So I'll work on this brim. I mean, the top of the head until the end. So I can make this into like a little beret for Miss Luna. <laughs> and so we're going to do a decrease and then we're going to do four more
think I'm going to get my husband to go up with me to the family dollar. We ain't got no snacks. <laughs> oh, right. No, never mind. We gotta, we're supposed to be going bowling tonight. Well, I guess I won't be going up there then. Let me see. I don't even know where my phone is at. I gotta check my phone after I finish this. Um, and make sure we ain't gonna be late. And I don't have any blue pom poms, so I will have to either make a pom pom. But yeah, this is um I bought this yarn last year, I believe, or year before last. I used it in um blanket, and this is what I had left. A blanket I made for my grandson. And I had that yarn left. All right. I need to take my central down and crank out some hats with it. Put some buttons on the top of them for the for the um pom-pom okay So you can see with the decreases how the hat is starting to go curve up, but it's doing it in a gradual way, um, not real sharp and abrupt. Um, by doing it like I started with every five of these of these um, bush stitches, and then I did a regular row all the way around, and then the next row I did every four for decreases. And so after this is the regular row, and so after this row, I'll do a decrease every three chain two spaces. Basically, every three chain two spaces, I'll do a decrease. And we just keep doing that while we're decreasing our hat until we determine that, okay, I want to just go ahead and cinch this top together here. Or like I said, if you want one that has more of a pointy end to put your um, pom-pom on, if you want to put a pom-pom on, then you can you can do another row of decreases it's your preference for how you like your slouchy looking hats to look okay so we back around i'm gonna do our slip stitch and chain two up and turn and then work in that chain two space. And so this is like every three chain two spaces, we're going to do the decrease. That's one, two, that's two, and that's three. And so we're going to do a decrease row here, a decrease here. That's one. Next chain two space, that's three. Do our double crochet. Double crochet, chain two, single crochet, and go to our next chain two space. So it's going to be one, and two, and three. And then we're going to do decrease. All right.
right, and so now we're going to do another decrease. Okay. And so we're not going to have enough for the decrease over there, so we're just going to do the rest of these. Now, somebody in the neighborhood is playing the music loud. Whoop D. Hopefully, I won't get no no YouTube hit. All right, so so that's where we're stopping at uh, right now. It's been two hours. Thank y'all for showing up and hanging out with me. We almost finished the hat. Uh, might finish it later on. Um, so I'm just gonna, yeah, I'll just put it away and I'll finish it later on for y'all, finish the decreases and stuff with y'all. But I'm getting ready to open up my needles and work on my, uh, grandpa cardigan by Hohe Locatelli. So y'all take care. Let's talk to y'all later. All right, VJ, and it's not magic. Y'all take care. I'll talk to y'all later. Anybody else that might still be lurking, y'all take care. VJ, are you going to be broadcasting today? Good night, Joy. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, Sanita and Sandrine will do a pop up tonight while I'm still awake. <laughs> uh, they be having it so late sometimes. I be sleep. <laughs> Thank you, our treasure home. Take care. <laughs>